but I'm curious to know your thoughts on Raul. Is he, I don't think anyone really feels that he is ready for this job. Can you counter that or do you agree with that idea? We can't know. That's the problem with, I was also a bit angry when we hired Sedan back in 2016 because you cannot know. It's a gamble, you know, just you haven't had, you choose the manager who hasn't uh, led players on the highest level. That's just how it is. And uh, we don't know. You know, for example, Raul has been very strict with the Castilla players on and off the pitch, you know, banned. How, what things has he banned? Phones, yeah. fancy yeah. bags. <laughs> Uh, he's not a big fan of phones. He's not a big fan of Sergio Lopez. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I mean, it, I'm sure he would uh, adjust to the first team. Um, but, you know, maybe he doesn't. Maybe he will be strict. Maybe the players will say, oh, what is, uh, what is he trying to do? I mean, we've been doing the same thing for years. So how will the players react to his style? We don't know. Um, the, you know, young Castilla players, they will do whatever, you know, when Raul speaks to them. So uh, it's just the lack of experience. At the same time, I look at the options and I'm not very uh, excited by those either. Um, and I, the thing is, Raul has the, Raul has the personality to, he will gain respect immediately. And then it just, uh, it's a matter of what will he do with it? Will he, yeah, uh, and tactically, who, which uh, trainers will he bring with him? Will he get help from them, for example? Um, I think that's also an underrated aspect, uh, the coaching staff. Uh, so, but it's just so many question marks. We can look at what is done with Castilla, um, but this high pressing game with Benzman has our leading the line. Yeah. Will that work? <laughs> yeah, just so many things, so many question marks. I agree. I think there's a lot of um, variables to putting Raul in charge of the senior team setup. Like, I mean, like Ruben said, he's very, he's a bit of a, he's enough, he's a disciplinarian. He's quite, <laughs> he's a bit of a your dad approach to man management in that sense. He's got a strain, he's got some strange, I'm going to argue dated ideas. I don't think really affect performance on the pitch, but it's a kind of image he wants to project of his teams. And I think there's a major difference to what essentially what he's doing at Castilla, where he's telling children that they can't, I mean, they're not children in the sense, eight, nine year olds, but they're not, you know, they're very young adults. He's, you know, telling these people that he can't where with his age and experience from position of authority that they can't have these things. And then I can't see a circumstance where he would go into a senior team set up with, full of you know fully grown men who've been in charge of their own lives for the last 10 15 years and tell them that they can't and you know i mean as someone as someone pointed out on twitter he changes his um name too often for me to remember but I, I, he can't imagine raul telling benzema that he can't have a phone when he's been making you know videos from his bugatti for the last <laughs> music videos in his bugatti for the last five years you know yeah and I mean, the joke is, is that, and you know, the joke for me is the contrast is I can only imagine, all I can see is Benzema driving off in his Porsche uh, and after each match and Sergio Rivas getting into his mom's minivan. <laughs> like there's just a completely different, in terms of, a, in terms of um, uh, squad, it's a different, it's a different tale altogether. And as Ruben also pointed out, the tactics, it's a, such an intense game. It's an intense atmosphere that you, and it's, it, it, even the players themselves, they don't really let too much, they don't really let on too much, but you can tell that there's a huge, there's a demand on these players and they would, they go to war for Raul. And I just don't know, even if the, even if mentally these, this current uh, uh, setup was willing to do that, I'm not sure if physically they're capable of playing that sort of game. Mm. My guess is, and again, who knows, but my guess would be that he may feel that, that those rules are for those kids at, for their time and their yeah. development. And he may yeah, not implement the be. same yeah. rules to you know Sergio Ramos and Benzema or the 18 players. Maybe he feels like these yeah, guys need to hear something yeah. different, right? It's possible. Mm. Um, what about, Sam, what about you? What, how do you feel about that? Um, I don't actually have anything negative whatsoever to say about Raul as a manager. In fact, um, we were talking about this on the podcast we recorded earlier. 
apart from Luis Miguel Ramirez about five or six years ago, I don't think there's been a better manager at Castilla than Raul. I think he really is up there and he's demonstrated that time and time again. He's he's fresh on it. He only um, took his first managerial role, what must have been three, three years ago now, if that, with the, the under-15s, Chris said. Within months, he was with the under-18s and then obviously promoted to steer. And the problem with this fast-tracked lifestyle that uh, ex-players live when it comes to coaching is that um, it's just that. They can be fast-tracked straight to it with no experience, no opportunity to actually progress their skill set and transfer their experiences and knowledge from playing into coaching. And you end up quite often with someone like Gary Neville at Valencia mm -hmm. or, dare I say it, Santiago Solari at Real Madrid. It can be a real danger. <laughs> and, and, uh, <laughs> we won't say much more on that one. Who had Solari um, and Sam Bingo? <laughs> <laughs> oh, the key word's been said. Um, but when I praise Raul, I... I really mean it. I mean, I'm so impressed by what he's done. You think about yeah. the injuries the Real Madrid first team have had this season. Raul has made the playoffs with Castilla, suffering not injuries, but uh, COVID-related um, uh, issues with players not being able to play with the first team snicking the Castilla players to make up for their injuries. He's had barely any squad whatsoever and he's done something that very few managers at Castilla actually managed to do within two seasons, uh, being such a, a fresh manager, I think if he was to be uh, promoted to the first team, I would not really have that yeah. much to complain about. He, he achieved it in a season and a half, really, because, I mean, the other one was mm. cancelled. But, I mean, yeah. this, and I suppose building off that point, four of the players from the Ibiza game were, were uh, uh, aside from four of the players from the Ibiza that played out of Ibiza, the rest were all playing either or were either playing youth football last season or are still playing youth football. So Alvaro Carrillo and Peter Federico are those two players. And mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, I think we in the, on the podcast, I think we came to the conclusion that if you want to refresh this squad with a tight budget and you're willing to, you know, willing to trust the manager in that vision, then Raul is definitely the man for you because he has done, he's been nothing but brave and extremely vindicated in his player selection as since taking over from as Castilla coach. He's taken, he's put the likes of Peter Federico who's been the breakout star for Castilla this season. He put him in direct in the headlights when we thought he wouldn't be in the Castilla setup till next year. Uh, he trusted Sergio Santos despite through the kind of awful Christmas period that he had, despite the fact he had plenty of reason to bench him within four or five games of a very slim first phase. Um, and he's and he's he's been adventurous from the start. He brought Israel Salazar into his mm -hmm. to the youth league, even though he'd only been training a week when uh, training a week with the squad when when the um, within the time that the squad was selected, and he brought players from the under 16s players that even he probably didn't have that much of a knowledge about. He just brought them to try them and to get to know them so not like few players are blessed with this a few managers are blessed with the bravery and certainly the insight that Raul has of this Cantera um but like saying all that it's that's a case where you know <laughs> it's a very it's a very kind of niche sort of scenario for that for him to succeed and then outside of that I do have my concerns i don't i can't see raul coming into this dressing room and kicking off another you know treaty or winning a league or winning any i don't no, see no trophies in the near future there's so yeah there's mm -hmm. there's gonna have to be a down period and i just don't see a coach surviving a down period someone's gonna I have to take someone's gonna have to take the bullet eventually a lot of people are worried that um he's just going to be exactly the same as energy zidane there's going to be no change um, and he'll bring the same ideas and, and uh, the same negative concepts uh, along with him. But I think um, he's very, very different to Zidane, not in every single factor. Mm, I agree. But I, I, we spoke about Zidane's stubbornness earlier on the, uh, on the podcast we recorded. And um, I think that's one of the things I hate the most about him is that he can be so stubborn. He'll stick with the old guard, even when he knows Luka Modric, four more games and Luka Modric is going to lose his legs. Um, he does not mind. He'll send players out on loan. He'll, he'll drive Erdegaard into, into the dirt until he's had enough. Um, all four, I don't know why. He's just very, very stubborn. And, and one memory I have from last season is Frank Garcia, uh, the left-back now at Rio Vocano. What used to drive me nuts was that uh, Zidane, all the managers that, that he played under would try and use him as a left winger. He was 
uh, just a complete left back um, and it would fail completely, but they would be so stubborn that that would be it. He'd be a left winger for the remainder of the season and it would waste not only Fran's time, but the actual left winger in the team's time as well. And I remember um, Raul played him twice as a left winger. Sorry, it didn't work and then swapped it straight back. And that is um, so different to so many of the managers that came through Castilla and, and Zidane himself that um, I don't know. I just feel I wouldn't, I would have no problems with Raul taking over, even though there are concerns, as Chris said, um, he certainly would not be the same uh, as Zidane. Yeah. I think tactically as well, there's certainly differences. Mm. Like I think like we, I suppose building off the points we've made, we're, <laughs> we're giving a lot of spoilers to our podcast, but whatever. <laughs> um, I suppose what we mentioned in the podcast was that I don't feel from what I've watched that Raul was a bystander in this Castilla team. And I think there are managers in the past who have been guilty of, relying on individual quality and being a bit of a bystander but I think Raul has 100% had to work for the for the performances he's gotten out of the team um he he started Arribas very centrally and Arriba for the first couple of games of the season and Arribas looked completely lost in the role just didn't have the physicality to challenge those those players and um, the defense to kind of get into the areas that he liked in youth football so as a kind of as an adjustment, Raul put him out wide, and he's been he's been just invincible out wide. He has beaten everybody who <laughs> dares to try and take the ball away from, him. and he's been extremely productive. And then also, he quickly saw that Antonio Blanco just wasn't a good it wasn't a good idea as a lone pivot, and that the team really suffered uh, in a, kind of that situation in terms of playing the ball out from defense and also on playing getting back so he remedied that by asking Dotor to drop back and help Blanco get the ball out from defense and also to cover defensively when we weren't when they weren't in possession and then obviously I mean even the work he's done with Hugo Vallejo to get him back into the team after he looked like such a dud like I've not seen it's incredible um some of the things he's been able to do with this team um and I know I mean obviously saying this stuff it all sounds very simple and it all sounds very uh, straightforward but it's I mean firstly we didn't see this with any Castilla man well personally I haven't seen it with any Castilla manager the willingness to spot mistakes and to change them all, um, like Raul has and also there was such there was so little room to play with during that first phase it was a case of getting the promotion playoffs or you're risking what is essentially either relegation to the fourth tier because you follow Segunda B back down to the fourth tier or potentially relegation to the what will be the fifth tier next season if you don't finish in those if you don't finish in the right spot so there wasn't a lot of and you had 18 games to decide that fate for your team so there wasn't a huge amount of time to think about these things there wasn't a huge amount of you know room for error there wasn't a huge amount you know there wasn't a huge amount of time to reflect you had to make these decisions you had to be smart and he was he did it and he did it to such an effect that we've ended up in a playoff with a team that were on paper, so inexperienced. So these are all really interesting points. And I think not to like, I think a lot of the listeners listening to this segment will will get maybe irrationally excited about Raul, given that mm-hmm. the way this discourse has gone so far. And uh, just to pump the brakes a little bit, because I know like I five months from now, there's going to be like a Raul disaster class in the, in, <laughs> in the Champions League and everyone's going to be mad yeah. at us for, for hyping him up too much. But uh, <laughs> I, you know, I, it's, but it's all true. Like a lot of this stuff is true. It's like, so what it's true that it's not ideal to promote a manager with no professional experience at, at the top level, too many variables. We have no idea how it'll translate to a higher level. It's, it's very risky, as Ruben said. Zidane was a lot of ways an anomaly, how successful he was. A more, again, Guardiola, an anomaly. Um, there's also the Pirlo's, the Lampards. This, is, this could also go very badly, right? So, exactly. Yeah. Um, having said that, we can just examine what we see. And a lot of it is what you guys also said, what Sam said, what, what Chris said, and that, you know, he has all these good things going for him. I think, for, and for there's a lot of people who will say, it, Zidane may not be the greatest tactician, but he's a man manager. 
for the man manager junkies, they're going to love Raul. You know, Raul is the type of person who will command the respect of anywhere he goes. Everybody at the club respects the hell out of him. He's, everyone's going to listen to him when, they, when he walks in. So he has a nice balance in that he'll get the respect of the legends, but he also knows the young players who will listen to him. So he has that, which is like, it's a transition period for the club. So that, that could be a good thing. Um, I think it's a Ruben's concern about like, will his pressing scheme work with Real Madrid? I think it's a valid concern. I will say Benzema's hardworking as hell off the ball. I would have more concerns about Hazard than about Benzema, to be quite honest in that situation. Um, sure, but, you sure. know, assuming that he can kind of, you know, pick his team and, and, you know, build his roster as, as he wants. And that could not, that maybe not, may not be too much of a problem. The other, the other side of this is that you look at the options and it's like, mm. okay, yeah. Allegri, Conte, Conte doesn't excite me. Allegri at least has European pedigree and that Juventus was always there in the discussion at the end of the Champions League, whether it's a semifinal or final, he got them far. He has league titles to show for. He's versatile. I, I also think, and this is, this is something that bothers me about Zidane, if this is true that he's leaving and he's decided this at the end. If you're going to leave, at least tell us sooner so we can sign Nagelsmann. Or like when he left last time, mm. he left like after Pochettino had already signed a new contract. At least give us yes, some heads yes. up, some notice so that we can plan this so that we're not like choosing between Raul and Allegri. You know what I mean? That drives me nuts. Mm. And again, I don't know if it's true. Maybe he's not leaving. It seems like there, there's, there's validity in these reports though and enough people are reporting it. And there are some hidden messages in his press conferences that point to the fact that he is. And this is also like, this is one of the things about Xabi Alonso that really pissed me off too. Because yeah, that, was yes. like, that annoyed me as well. Yeah, actually, I love Chabi was... to death, but he, the same thing happened with when he left, right? Um, yes. So that that stuff kind of drives me nuts. Mm. I suppose on Chabi, he was also a <laughs> he wasn't a, maybe he wasn't an option because Mucci and Gladbach weren't able to get him, but he was also kind of a manager that was. It, it, and it's you know actually I suppose we're talking about Castilla. It's a similar situation for Castilla with Raúl because yeah. I mean he hasn't he said that the first team is his home, but he didn't say that he wasn't leaving. He was kind of just said that there was a conversation to be had. But for Castilla, Juvenal A, the Jorge Romero, from what I've read, his his um job is in is at risk because of the way the under 19s have performed towards the end of this season. Apparently, Arbelo is taking over that job, but there's been I mean, Arbelo's qualifications as a coach, I mean, actual licenses. There's been, I, I'm not really up to date on the subject, but when he joined the Infantile setup, it was partially as an experience to get his next coaching license. So who he's actually qualified to manage rule, might rule him out as a Castilla candidate. And then you're kind of just shuffling through these strange managers in the under 18s and the, the um, Cadet AA and all that. And you're, it's the same story. It would be very handy to have, if Raul was considering leaving, to have known in February uh, when there was you know, there was options on the market. I mean, I'm not sure when Shabby decided he was going to renew with Real Sociedad B, but to have gotten nipped in and maybe given him second thoughts about that decision would have been handy. But yeah, so it's a similar story for Castilla as well. It's quite frustrating. <laughs> I don't, I'm not sure if it would have been positive for the club, though, to know that you're in the middle of the run-in. Yeah, this Champions is it, isn't it? La Liga, the... That you know he's leaving at the end of the season. In Real Madrid especially, I don't think that would have been good. Yeah. Between uh, Raul, Chabi and Guti, out of those three, which name would excite you the most? I think Sam's probably more qualified to answer this question because <laughs> he's seen all three. The well, he is not seen Chabi, yeah. What's that? As in how they are now? Like, in terms of managing Real Madrid next season, out of those three, if you had to pick. I think Guti, unfortunately, as exciting as he was, I don't know what he's been doing for the past few years. So he uh, is banging third, yeah, right down there. <laughs> um, he's also been going at the club, like, with his... Uh, yes. He's yeah, had some yeah, burning, yeah. burning a few bridges there. I'm not sure what's going on. I imagine he left quite, it was quite bitter when he left because he should have got that job and, and he was obviously snubbed for it. So, yeah, why not um, to say that the time is the question, isn't it? Yeah, it's true. <laughs> really. 
Um, <laughs> third place either way. Um, that's really tough, Shabby or um, or Raul. It's really tough. I don't know. I I really know very little about Shabby as a manager, other than that. I know. If there's anyone I would trust with no experience, it's probably him. <laughs> but I, I just don't I know. He's, I know he's um, done some wonderful work with Real Sociedad B. Mm, I actually just remember that. This day. Yeah, I actually remember that they, yeah, they got, they won their playoff by the look of it. Won today. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, which is, it's, it's close. Did we, yeah. did so, we get a Real Sociedad that? B versus yeah. Castilla game? Like Raul versus Xavi? Can't remember. Mm, no. No, okay. We've played them in the no. past, but I think um, they're in a different group. This yeah, the shuffle up this season took us out of contention with them. Mm. But I want to mention something about Zidane because I, I think we all agree, and it has been mentioned in this podcast already, that his stubbornness, if there's one thing that's negative about Zidane, it's his stubbornness. His circle of trust is very small, so uh, it will take a lot for him to drop his uh, the players who have been bringing him success. Okay. Mm. Still... If we bring in Raul and he he goes, you know, bananas with the young players, he just gives everyone the chance and he tosses out the red runs and you just he, he does the, the renewal, which probably is necessary. It's necessary to bring in the new younger players and give them a proper chance. But do not underestimate Sedan's ability to bring out the results and what that what yeah. impact that has on the younger players. You do not want the younger players to uh, be playing under Solari, the Lopetegui that season. You don't want them to play with the fans booing them, with their souls going against you all the time. The, the team isn't performing. Sidan yeah. at least has been able to bring in the players, maybe not as often as uh, he should have. Maybe some players has left because of his stubbornness. But at least we've been getting results. And in Real Madrid, yeah, we can talk as much about the renewal as, as, as we want. And it's important. But in Real Madrid, it's the results. And when the fans get back to the stadium, they will not accept boring football and bad results. That's just yeah, how it is. It, so, yeah. That's, I completely agree. And I, I come, Javi Sanchez comes to mind. Like he was the next Sergio Ramos until we lost to csk moscow in mm, a home mm, in the champions mm. league and then he was never heard from again <laughs> yeah that's yeah. partly via the lead's fault right like mm-hmm. they just yeah decided not to but, use him ever and then some for some reason bought him and then started yeah. playing him and <laughs> started like, playing um, him yeah very strange i don't know it's it's bizarre but yeah i completely agree and i suppose this is a thing we're tiptoeing around when you talk about renewal and that is that it's just not it's not really doable in a club that doesn't really want to see in a downside in results. And that's not just the fans. That's the president as well. There's no more ki- like there's a reason there's no bigger kiss of death than Florentino Perez coming out and saying that your job is safe. Mm. Like this, like this is um, the atmosphere we live in. Um, mm. So, like I said, it to me, there's a there's certainly a transition job to be done here. And someone's going to have to, a manager is going to have to bite the bullet in terms of, you know, getting the boosh <laughs> before someone, the next guy can come in and actually do, uh, pick up the pieces and take this team to the next level. But so I suppose considering the financial constraints, that might be, that might be Raul. I, I mean, that's a good point. And I also, I, I don't know if this is a hot take, a lukewarm take, a cold take. I don't know what it is, but it's a take I haven't seen yet. So I think if he leaves, it means that Mbappe is not coming. Because I think if he knew Mbappe, if he knew he was going to coach Mbappe next season, he mm. would have stayed. But yeah, I think they'd I think be that's like, look, a good argument. it's too impossible. We're not going to be able to sign him. And I just feel like coaching him next season would have been exciting enough that he would have stayed. Yeah. I, don't I think I true. I think I speak for myself and Matt in saying that I think every in my brain everything that when we talk about managers or players my impression for me the impression is that we just don't have, we wouldn't financially have the ability to bring those sort of players in in the first place so I mean if I, I Did think you know there's like a of, cult following on there's a cult on Twitter that basically is is uh, yeah, pushing like them. this yeah. conspiracy that we do have money and that like we're all wrong Secret and money. the financial yeah. books are a lie. 
yeah the secret <laughs> money yeah I've, I've seen they've replied to my articles they love me out there um but yeah i mean everything that everything is um for me is prefaced by the idea we're not spending big in the summer if it was a case of we could spend big in the summer then i would be urging and it, maybe even regardless i'd be urging the club to consider trying begging zidane to stay and even okay. if the if the finances were there i'd even consider allegri because i think there's i mean he's pretty he's inoffensive as a coach to me uh i think he could get results if he had resources to get in some players that he needed because i think and you've brought this point up too kian is that the, as much as there is a refresh needed it's there's still elements of this team that can play well there's still element there's still positive elements it's not like the whole team needs to be trashed and we need to bring in a whole new squad. Yeah. Uh, about Mbappe, I think if, and there is no question, if we're going to bring in him, we're going to bring him in, it's going to hurt. <laughs> it's going to hurt. We will have to sacrifice some players who we don't want to sacrifice. And I think fans always want to set up their teams in, you know, line of builder and, you know, they want to keep all of the good players and then add Mbappe and add Holland. But for us to bring in Mbappe, okay, Ramos, out. Uh, maybe Varane, you know, some of these players, some of the, it has to hurt. We have to sell players with high, wage, high wages and who can bring in high transfer fees. And are we willing to do that? Are we willing to sacrifice Varane, who could be our future captain, if it meant that, okay, then PSG will uh, negotiate for, for Mbappe. Uh, if we can do that and we can sell enough of these players, if we are willing to sacrifice Vinicius and Baran, for example, well, then maybe it could happen. But I think also uh, Zidane is very unhappy with the, um, uh, the prospect of Ramos not continuing and him losing some of these players. I don't think he likes that. I don't think he wants to be the manager who lets Ramos go. Uh, so there are several things here, but I, mm-hmm. I'm sure that if we want Mbappe, we have to acknowledge it has to hurt in some parts. Lucas brought up the Holland blew my mind. Yeah, Holland. Holland. Yeah. Is it Holland? <laughs> Holland. Mm. My whole oh, man, I don't know if rocked. I could relearn that. <laughs> Holland. Uh, Lucas brought up the point. Holland. Lucas brought up the point. Like, someone asked on the mail, like, beg, like, would we swap Vinicius for Mbappe? And Lucas said uh, he would drive anyone on this scene to the airport. In exchange for Mbappe, mm. no exception. I, I, I don't know if may, maybe he had an exception. I can't remember, but I think his general point is true. Like, yeah. Uh, how I crazy how will far the away Lucas lives from the airport? <laughs> I don't know. He'll, he'll he'll find a way. Imagine I don't even if think it was he has a car. Hold on, it depends on what airport, doesn't it? It's the Madrid airport, and he lives in Valencia. That's a yeah. long drive. He'll find a way. He'll find a way. Um, yeah. <laughs> how crazy will the Norway Pena parties be if we have Holland and Ooh. Odegaard next season? Oh, I mean, <laughs> I will be the president of the world then. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not, not only president of the Pena. No, but that would have been, oh, no, I can't even dream about it. But it's not that unrealistic uh, it's not. if this, uh, ho- this Holland clause exists after next season with the 75 million euros, if that's possible. Yeah, could be, but it would have been, would have been insane. Yeah, 